Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church, Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer at what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. But of course, some days we do deviate from the pattern of doing one of the readings for morning and evening prayer. Uh, on Wednesday, we talked about the Feast of Ember Day, and I thought today we would talk a little bit about the feast that's assigned on the universal calendar, uh, and particularly on the calendar for those who are followers of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, and that is, today is the Feast of the Stigmata of St. Francis. Uh, we talked a little bit about this uh, at Mass yesterday, because there's not Mass celebrated today, but I did want to kind of draw a little bit more about what is known as the stigmata. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi lived in the 13th century. Uh, he's the founder of what we know as the Franciscan Orders, you know, the Brown Road Friars. But he also actually founded three religious orders. The first one, the First Order of Friars, the ones that people are most familiar with. Uh, the second order was actually founded with St. Clair of Assisi, and those are the semi-enclosed nuns, uh, so all the sisters. But St. Francis also founded what is known as a Third Order Franciscan, or a tertiary. Uh, the Third Order is a layman or priests, uh, male or uh, male or female, right? Lay or ordained, uh, and you follow a rule of life based on the Franciscan charism. But you live in the world rather than living in a monastery or a friary or a convent. Uh, you would live out in the world, living a rule of life. Now, a lot of religious orders have this sort of an oblate or uh, an external member uh, as well. But St. Francis founded this particular order with a rule of life so that people could try to seek after this gospel uh, sense of living that Francis had drawn out to point people towards Jesus Christ. Uh, St. Francis was really a pretty remarkable person. Uh, he was kind of an upper middle class guy, son of a prosperous merchant, wanted military vainglory, uh, wanted to be a knight, uh, and his father, of course, had the money to equip him with all the finest of equipment. But it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that, in fact, this Francis, who was also the life of the party, you know, Mr. Ra Ra, follow me, let's go have a good time, that he was, God had other plans for Francis, and it wasn't military vainglory, it wasn't all of those other things, that God had a plan for him to help to literally rebuild the church. And in fact, after Francis had some setbacks in his military attempts, uh, it was in prayer uh, and contemplation that he realized that God was calling him to a particular religious vocation. And in fact, while he was meditating on what we know as the San Damiano cross, and it's that pretty familiar cross with the gold outline, uh, he actually heard Jesus say to him, Francis, rebuild my church. Uh, Francis originally thought that he meant the physical building that he was praying in uh, and began that project, but what he meant really was this new charism that would help to revive the church in the 13th century. One of the things that happened near the end of Francis's life, and he was relatively young when he passed away, was that he received what is known as the stigmata. The stigmata is an outward sign of the crucifixion upon the flesh of a human being. There have been several people in the course of the church's history uh, that have been uh, tested and, and made sure that it wasn't a hoax, that they in fact did bear the marks on their body by some sort of divine work, the crucifixion of our Lord. They shared in our Lord's suffering. Uh, the most modern one that's probably pretty well known is St. Padre Pio, who died in the 1960s. And there's lots of information there out there about him with the internet, of course. Uh, there's also the video out there of him saying Mass and the like. But Francis is, is the most uh, famous of them and the earliest. And I thought I would read a little bit out of the book called The Perfect Joy of St. Francis. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, a history based on uh, the little flowers of St. Francis in kind of a novel form. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, on this feast of the Holy Cross, I ask for two things before I die, that during my short life I may feel your sufferings and your love in my soul and in my body. Francis was kneeling outside of his hut. His prayer quivered in the silence of the night. Dawn was near. It was bitingly cold, and the stars were shining brightly in the sky. And then, as the first glimmer of light appeared in the dark, what he had lived for all his life happened. All of a sudden, there was a dazzling light. It was though the heavens were exploding and splashing forth all their glory in the millions of waterfalls of colors and stars. And in the center of that bright whirlpool was a core of blinding light that flashed down from the depths of the sky with a terrifying speed until suddenly it stopped, motionless and sacred. Above a pointed rock in front of Francis, 
It was a fiery figure with wings nailed to a cross of fire. Two flaming wings rose straight upward. Two others opened out horizontally and two more covered the figure. And the wounds in the hands and feet and the heart were blazing rays of blood. The sparkling features of the being wore an expression that supernatural beauty and grief. It was the face of Jesus, and Jesus spoke. Then suddenly streams of fire and blood shot from his wounds and pierced the hands and feet of Francis with nails and his heart with the stab of a lance. As Francis uttered a mighty shout of joy and pain, the fiery image impressed itself into his body as into a mirrored reflection of itself and with all its love, its beauty, and its grief. And it vanished within him. Another cry pierced the air. Then, with the nails and wounds through his body and with his soul and spirit aflame, Francis sank down unconscious in his blood. So anyway, it's, it's quite a, 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 an interesting scene that must have been. And for the rest of Francis' life, he bore on his body the marks of the crucified Jesus. Uh, it's particular charism and it's rare. Uh, but it is a way in which we see that Francis shared in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Not that Jesus' sufferings weren't sufficient, they certainly were. But that Francis then became an icon, a mirror to the world of the loving sacrifice that Jesus made for us to pay the price for our sins. So today is Friday. Uh, no public worship at St. John's today, uh, but we are getting ready for the weekend, so be sure that you make plans to be with us Sunday to glorify God and to receive the sacrament. And may you have a day full of blessings.